All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, uh, let's take some time to uh, look at some uh, meiosis vocabulary that will be uh, useful as we try to make sense of uh, some of what happens uh, during this process. Now, uh, during G1 of interfa interphase, uh, we're going to have uh, this unreplicated chromosome. So we have some genetic information here that has not been copied. Now, uh, during uh, G2, uh, you're going to copy that information and uh, ultimately have uh, but what will be referred to as a replicated chromosome. So all you've done is basically copy this information. Now recall that uh, these two copies uh, of this genetic information are referred to as sister chromosomes. So you still have one chromosome, it just is made of, uh, I'm sorry, two, not sister chromosomes, sister uh, chromatids. Sorry if that caused your heart to uh, start to beat a little faster there. Uh, but two sister chromatids make up this replicated chromosome. Now something is holding together these sister chromatids and that something is a protein called cohesin. So cohesin is a protein that holds together the sister chromatids. Now, uh, this is significant because uh, cohesin will keep sister chromatids together uh, until uh, they need to be separated during meiosis too. So uh, they do need to be broken down uh, before sister chromatids can separate. So let's make a note of that. Now, I m only make mention of this because uh, Again, there will be questions related to uh, cohesin and its role uh, on the quiz and test. So please make sure uh, you're familiar uh, with cohesin and its implications in uh, meiosis. Now, let's transition to uh, what happens during uh, prophase uh, of meiosis, or I should say prophase one to be more specific. So during prophase one, when the first round of cell division uh, is getting ready to occur. So we have our original cell here. We have replicated chromosomes, one from uh, biological dad. Or actually, let me change colors around so it's a little easier to see. One from biological dad and uh, a chromosome from biological mom. Now, uh, what's interesting about this is that when these chromosomes uh, begin to organize themselves during prophase one, what they'll do is create some overlap. Now, uh, this overlap creates uh, what's called a tetrad. Now, tetra means four, so it's referring to the four sister chromatids that are involved in uh, the creation of this tetrad. Now, uh, what you do is you have a homologous chromosomes, similar in size, shape, and structure, uh, unbanding pattern, overlapping with one another. The process is called synapsis. So again, uh, please note that this is the process of these chromosomes overlapping and um, forming a tetrad. Now, synapsis is the process, and just to uh, spell it out, we could say homologs or homologous chromosomes uh, are joined uh, by a, a, a protein complex uh, to create uh, what's called the synaptimal, I'm sorry, synaptimal 
complex. Ooh, that's a mouthful. So, uh, during the process of synapsis, these homologous chromosomes are physically joined to one another uh, by a protein. Now, this is significant because a little later in prophase one, again, this is also part of prophase one, what we're going to do is have uh, portions of these homologous chromosomes actually exchange pieces of DNA uh, with one another. So, chromosomes that were actually on uh, the paternal chrom I'm sorry, genes actually on the paternal chromosome will actually be transferred to the maternal chromosome and uh, vice versa. So, uh, again, let's name the process. Uh, it's crossing over. And again, this is a process we're referring to here. Uh, and what happens is non-sister chromatids, so they're basically saying one from mom, one from dad, uh, will exchange DNA or portions of their chromosomes. Ultimately, this is going to help uh, create uh, greater um, variation uh, in the potential offspring, because remember, this DNA genetic information is eventually going to go through the rest of meiosis one and meiosis two and create some gametes. And what you're doing is helping uh, sort of shuffle up or exchange information uh, between the original chromosomes to help create greater variability variability in offspring. Now, uh, in late prophase one, the synaptomal complex will break down, and uh, the homologous chromosomes will start to pull apart from one or one another slightly. Now I've drawn some space in between these, uh, but what I'm going to do is try and exaggerate that uh, a little more here, uh, simply for emphasis. So here is the uh, maternal chromosome, and now I'll draw uh, the paternal chromosome here, again with some overlap. Now, it is this portion that is of interest, this overlap, this X portion or overlap portion is called the chiasma, or uh, chiasmata uh, for plural. Now this is referring to uh, not a process, but a physical structure. This is what holds together um, the homologous chromosomes at the end of prophase. So we can just say this is the X shape after the synaptomal complex breaks down. So uh, the basic idea is you start off with a chromosome and make a copy of it. Uh, these copies are held together by a protein called cohesin. Uh, at the beginning of meiosis, the homologous chromosomes, uh, chromosomes from different parents, join together uh, and exchange portions of DNA. Then the proteins that held them together begin to let go, uh, and what we now have are chromosomes that are primed and ready to be separated uh, during the latter stages of meiosis.